it's that time of the year and we need to remember things for next year. Who are the players that you don't want to forget about? I got that and more on today's action-packed episode of Locked On Fantasy Baseball. You are Locked On Fantasy Baseball, your daily fantasy baseball podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, fantasy baseball fanatics, and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Baseball Podcast, brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, we are your number one source for fantasy baseball knowledge, and thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. I'm your host, Matthew Ane. You can find me on Twitter or X at Matthew underscore Ane. If you're watching on YouTube, please click the bell below to subscribe to the channel and give you a notification every time we drop a new episode. Also, please leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple or Spotify, wherever you may listen. It really helps out the show. And... You know, if you guys want a little bit more than what we offer in this 30-minute podcast, check us out on the subtext and become a member of the Diamond Club. You get a free two weeks. Link is in the description below. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks. Uh, Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on and use the code all lowercase locked on MLB to win $50 instantly, instantly when you play $5. All right. Now that I'm done stumbling through my words, um, this is a great episode, something we're going to try out. I think it's very helpful. It's something I do mentally, right? So, like, the end of the season or towards the end of the season, I start, like, you know, going back, looking through players, seeing, you know, who really overperformed in their for, of their ADP, who do I think had a breakout, who I think is on the precipice of going to have a breakout next year. And, you know, these are players I want to remember. So, ultimately, everybody's going to be a little bit more on the positive side tonight. And, you know, we're going to remember these players for next year. So all about keeping it in the back of your mind here. It's like a watch list type deal, but it's more of like a, you know, let's see how they're trending in spring training. Let's see if there's any off, um, you know, off season, you know, kind of notifications about them. You know, are they trying new things? Are they, you know, picking up a new pitch? Are they trying a new swing? Did they go to driveline, et cetera? What are they doing to make themselves better that are going to make them a better fantasy asset for 2025? It's wild that we're even talking about next year, but I think that, we're in a position right now where whether you're in the playoffs or out of the playoffs, it's a good time to take a review and and count and look back at the season and kind of see, okay, what are we doing next year? And, you know, how do I get that leg up? And this is the perfect way to do it. So without further ado, I want to start off with a name that I think is going to be pretty valuable. That's probably not going to be, you know, very highly rated based off of the season numbers. But at the same time, he had a lot of key performances that look good and he plays for a really good team. And that's Spencer Schwallenbach. Schwallenbach had a, you know, pretty good season number, you know, finishing with a 3.69 ERA, still a couple of weeks left to go through 92 innings, um, you know, 104 strikeouts, a whip of 106, and, you know, really just looked great this season in certain starts, but other starts was not reliable. You know, he did have a bunch of blow-up games, but hey, that's part of being a rookie. But I will say this about Schwallenbach. Next year, he's going to be somebody that we're probably looking at, like, you know, top 40, you know, top maybe 50 pitcher, something that we're going to try and try and get everywhere. You look at his underlining stats and they're really impressive. Truthfully, X ERA of 306, X batting average of 224, fastball velocity of 95.8 miles per hour, average exit velocity 87.4, which is fantastic. A chase rate of 35.6, a whiff rate of 29.3%, a K rate of 27.6%, walk rate of point of 5%. Barreled, loud barreling up only 4% of the time. You know, I would like to see him, you know, you know, essentially kind of get his hard hit percentage down a little bit towards like more of like the, the, t- the 29s where it's at a 37 right now and produce a little bit more ground balls. But other than that, this kid just has it all. Even the breaking ball, off-speed pitches all look great, have great movement. And the fastball was a little bit more on the slower side, on the less moving side, but still was getting it done enough. It's also which wild too. He has a great arsenal, right? Four seam fastball, slider, cutter, curveball, split finger, and sinker. And, you know, had a good mix of every pitch, but pretty much the sinker threw the least amount. Obviously lived on that fastball um, at 27.4% of the time, but then slider 19.6, cutter 16.9, curveball 14.9, split finger of 13.7. So he threw it all and was pretty effective, I think, with all of them. You know, you go over and look at the batting average. His worst pitch was his cutter at a 310 batting average. And that's pretty bananas, just like cutter being that. But I could totally see it at the same time. Maybe he removes it from his arsenal since he has a four seam fastball. But, you know, he got a lot of putaways with his split finger, his curveball, 
even his sinker when he did throw it at, on on that seven point five percent of the time, and his four seam fastball got a good pre, uh, got a good put away too at four um nineteen point five percent and a slider of twenty one point six percent. You know everything about him just screams really good and has a lot of potential. You know, and it, and I don't want to do this to Schwallenbach and kind of put it over him, but he has a lot of like reminiscence for me at least of a Bobby Miller and how Bobby Miller was very mature, had a deep arsenal, had a lot of good things going for him in his rookie year. And honestly, for the beginning of the year until he kind of like got hurt and things like that. So let's just hope that Schwalmbach doesn't have the same fate as Bobby Miller for next year. And I think that Schwalmbach is somebody we're going to be talking about that could really rise to ADP based off of further analysis. And I think even a pretty good spring that's going it, to, it, everything is going to be riding on him. I think that Schwalmbach is going to be somebody we're going to be talking about it's going to be very valuable for next year. And the more and more I look into him is the more and more I start to like him. A very complete pitcher and a very mature pitcher for a guy that's pretty young. Um, him and the um, Atlanta Braves are going to be very happy. Um, let's move on to Spencer Araghetti of the Houston Astros. He's one that, yeah, he got lit up tonight, but whatever. We're not going to you know highlight just one performance. He's had a couple of up and down performances, but he's been a strikeout machine and a guy that I feel has been really good. You know, we look at, you know, overall stats and it's not as impressive with the ERA being a 463, but it took a little time to mature. His first couple starts, uh, you know, really weren't where where he was, you know, very successful. But after that, he really did turn it on. You know, he has 151 strikeouts or 124 in his pitch. He has a whip of 1375. Again, not as indicative of what he's actually doing. A 405 FIP, which is a little bit better, fielding independent pitching. So that's a ERA indicator if, if you had an average defense behind you, right? And you know, we can look at the underlying stats too, right? So like he had really good, you know, movement on his, you know, breaking balls. Fastball was kind of flat and so was his off-speed pitches, but, you know, still was getting the job done. His ex-batting average was actually a 222. The ex-ERA was a 381. So even better than his FIP and, you know, almost a whole run less than his actual ERA that he posted on the season. Fastball velocity is at 94.1. So like, you know, not even a whole mile per hour of what, you know, baseball savant would call elite. Average of exit velocity is at 89 miles an hour, which, you know, you go down 0.1 and then it starts getting into the red category. You know, it's the beginning of good average exit velocity for hitters, but it's at the beginning. So, like, it, it's not atrocious. That can be corrected. Um, he's not getting the chase like he wants, but you know what? He is creating whiffs. He is getting guys to, you know, miss entirely. He's striking out guys at a serious rate of, you know, 124 innings pitch to 140 strikeouts, 151 strikeouts, I mean. Um, you know, it's, it's looking really great in, the, in those regards. He's not, he's walking guys a little bit too much, which still is a thing, but I think that'll be, that'll come down. You know, you remember like how, and I'm, again, I'm not comparing him to Snell, but you remember how pitchers like, like Snell, Araghetti falls in that category where like they walk a lot of guys. So they're just trying to strike every single guy out. Once they figure out, you know, how to get the control in a little bit, you know, learn that they can kind of, you know paint the corners a little bit more. They're going to, he's going to figure it out and become even more elite. The strikeout, the strikeout numbers on the season are really indicative of what it can be. I would like him to, you know, decrease the barrel and hit hard hit percentage, but, and I'd also like to see him create a little bit more ground balls because it's kind of ugly on those regards, but he's a young pitcher. The dude is literally 24 years old. I think next year he's going to learn. He's going to take what he learned this year and implement it next year and be successful. I don't think he's going to be a top 40 pitcher, probably more in the top 50. But again, it's still somebody that we could be considering. You know, I still have to do my rankings too. So I might look at this and he might end up in the 60s or 70s. And you're going to be like, guys, what, Matt, what are you talking about? But, you know, I see a lot of upside and things I like about him that can really translate into next year. You know, you look at even his arsenal, right? Four seam ca uh, fastball, curveball, cutter, sweeper, changeup, slider. It's These are nice pitches. Obviously, he lives on that four seam fastball at 41.2% of the time. Mixes in that curve and cutter at 19.5%, 19.4%. Really doesn't throw the other two pitches all that much. Sweeper's about 11%, change us about 8 and has thrown the slider very middle, literally four times. So it is what it is. But the put away on that curveball is 34%. Uh, percent. The cutter is getting about 22%. And even the four seam fastball at 18.5%, he's getting good results on it. And when he does throw the, the uh, sweeper, it's getting about 27% of the time. He's doing good things. He just needs to kind of like just, I guess, mix up a little bit more. And I think this kid could be successful. Maybe really work on how to get movement on that fastball because that's getting hit at a batting average of 290. But, you know, 
there's things that are going to change in those regards. And, you know, next year is going to bring a hell of a lot more, you know, a full off season working with the big league pitching that's out there. You know, you can work with the Framo Valdez and the Justin Verlanders to try and get some tips on how to, how to, you know, get more movement on those pitches, which would take him from really good right now to elite. So keep an eye out for Spencer Arigetti for the next season. And coming up next, you know, I got a lot of pitchers, but I also got hitters too. You know, I'm not just going to sit here, but this is a pretty good, uh, pretty good list of pitchers and they're coming up next. So stay tuned. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. Download the Prize Picks app today and use the code Locked On MLB and get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. Exploring my skills on Prize Picks this season adds an extra layer of excitement to daily fantasy sports. You can now win up to a hundred times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn ten dollars into a thousand dollars really fast. Prize Picks incredibly user friendly. I can make my selections and submit my entries in less than sixty seconds. And the host. As the host of Locked On Fantasy Baseball, I might as well give you some picks to get started off with, right? Offer Rano Blanco to have higher than 5.5 strikeouts in his next start. Offer Brandon Marsh to have higher than 0.5 total hits in his next outing. And offer Corey Seager to have higher than 0.5 home runs in his next game. Download the Price Pick app today and use the code Locked On MLB and get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. Again, use the code Locked On MLB on Price Picks to get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. You don't even need to win to receive the five fifty dollar bonus. It's guaranteed. Price Picks run your game. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have you had to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all that screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, news, and streaming 24-7 on YouTube or free on the Amazon Fire TV channel app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Introducing the Locked On Fantasy Baseball podca- Podcast podcast. Diamond Club on Subtext, your ultimate fantasy baseball companion. As the season unfolds, rely on our dynamic content. Get real-time alerts right to your phone, including waiver wire rankings, instant call notifications, injury actions, and a whole lot more. Stay ahead of your fantasy leagues by joining the Diamond Club on Subtext, where your path to victory begins. And guys, you know what? Any any moment a, uh, a prospect can be called up, and you don't want to miss out on those alerts. So join us on the Subtext, and we're going to make sure to keep you ahead of your fantasy leagues. So check us out. The link's in the description below. You get a free two weeks. Let's get back into this, right? I've, I I spent a lot of time on these two pitchers, and I want to keep it going. I want to get all these names in if I can. And the next guy up is Brian Wu of the Seattle Mariners. Um, I actually really like Wu. I liked him going into the season. He was a guy I was super high on and, you know, had, had obviously had some injury issues to start off the season on and off this year. But when he was been out there, he's been really successful, right? 94 innings pitched, 71 strikeouts, a 230 ERA, a 330 FIP, a 0. 0.80 whip, fantastic numbers in those regards. You know, he's not, he hasn't really been the strikeout guy, like the K per nine, even though last year he had it, right? It's 87 innings pitched, 93 strikeouts. Now, I would love to see that from him. I just don't know if we ever, we, we really will. You know, you look at even his minor league stats, he he did have those seasons, but the, the ERA was higher in 22, 23. He kind of figured it all out a little bit, but, it hasn't really translated into the bigs yet. And, you know, I don't, I'm not sure really what's behind it because he has great stuff. You know, you look at like, you know, his baseball savant page, obviously, and you can probably see in the reflection of my glasses that everything's pretty much red, you know, fastball run value, which is the movement stellar breaking, breaking ball stuff, off speed pitches, stellar X ERA of 245 and X batting average of 213 fastball sitting at 94.7 miles an hour. Average exit velocity given up is about 87.9 miles an hour. The things that obviously aren't translating for the K's is the chase, the whiff, and the K's. Those three things usually go hand in hand, and they're in the they're in the blue, right? So, you know, I, I, it'll come because he has elite stuff and control. It's just a matter of when. You know, he's not walking guys. He's not allowing guys to barrel up. He's not creating, um, not allowing hard hits, ground balls. He's producing. So, you know, maybe he just this year is going to be an off year in terms of K's and maybe he figures it all out next year. I'm going to be drafting him pretty high. Honestly, I think he's going to be a top 25, top 30 pitcher for me. And in, in all honesty, Wu has been fantastic. His arsenal is really great too. Four seam fastball sinker, change up slider sweeper. You know, he's throwing the fastball at 50, uh, 50% of the time, which, you know, not 
bad, but it is a lot. And I'd like to see that pitch mix get changed up a little bit. And maybe, you know, we'll see a little bit more translate to the K numbers. You know, sinker follows with 23.7% of the time, really doesn't throw throw the change up or slider all that much at 9%, 8%, and 8%. But, you know, this is the part. He does have great pitches. He just needs to lean on them a little bit more to keep the guys at the plate a little bit more off off uh, tilt and you know have to guess a little bit more you know if you're throwing the fit if you're throwing a fastball 50 percent of the time they're going to know what's coming and that means you have to be super on point with it even though he has fantastic movement you just have to be spot on every night and yeah you might not get lit up but you also they're not going to swing or they're going to know when to swing and you're going to get a ground out or something of that sort where you're not going to get the, the case to reflect on the scoreboard and the stat sheet so Brian Wu hopefully can figure it out and, you know, mix up that pitching arsenal. Let's talk about this next guy, Hunter Brown of the Houston Astros. Another guy that, honestly, I'm going to be honest, guys, did you the service this year? I was down on him after that second half that he really posted. Really wasn't pretty, and I just really wasn't as confident in him, you know, going down the stretch coming into this year. And it just, like, obviously flipped my mouth, and I'm here to apologize openly and loudly. You know, 147 innings pitched. He had 155 strikeouts. He had a 3.55 ERA, a 3.69 FIP, so right on par. A 1.286 WHIP, which is a little high for me, almost a 1.3. I would like to see that dip down, but guys like him again, same thing you're talking about. You know, Arigetti, these guys like just walk guys out because they're trying to strike out every single guy. Hopefully, he, he can you know figure that out. But you know, you look at Hunter Brown's underlining stats, and everything's great. Fastball movements great. Off speed uh, movements are great. Breaking ball can use a little bit of work, but it's XERA is a 333, you know, a half a run, uh, you know, a quarter of a run below. X batting average is a 226. Fastball velocity is at 95.8 miles an hour. Average exit velocity is super elite, 85.8 miles an hour. He's not really getting guys to chase or whiff, but he is creating the, the Ks, obviously. Walking guys, obviously, it's a little too much, but barrel and hard hit percentage and ground balls being produced, all done, all well done, having a fantastic season. It's supported. And now I can kind of say, like, hey, next year, you know, what are we going to be doing with Hunter Brown? We're going to be drafting him. He's going to be a, probably a top 30 pitcher as well, I think. I, I can't wait to rank and start starting that process. Season's not over yet. Um, I, you know, I want to see what guys do in the playoffs, and I want to see how, how these guys all shape out before I do them. But Hunter Brown's going to be somebody I'm really interested in next year. You know, he has a great arsenal as well, four-seam fastball, cutter, sinker, changeup, knuckleball, knuckle curve, I apologize, and a slider. You know, throws the the fastball about 35.6% of the time than the cutter at 17, sinker at 16, changeup at 13, knuckle curve at 12.7, and sinker really not at all, 5.6 miles an hour. But he gets to put away pretty easily, evenly with all of them. So he's doing all the right things. I'm excited to see what Hunter Brown is going to be doing next year. I can't wait to see where he's going to be ranked. Let's move on. Let's talk about Luis Heel of the New York Yankees. Heel kind of came out of nowhere. He's a name, like, being a Yankee fan, I kind of knew who he was and whatnot, but, like, didn't think this year was going to be this kind of year. I'll be straight up with you. You know, I'm yeah, I'm good at my job, but I'm not that good. Um, Heel came out 124 innings pitched, 144 strikeouts, a 339 ERA, a 119 whip, a FIP of 388. So, FIP is a little bit worse than, you know, what's being posted, but it's not atrocious. I love the Kato, Kato innings pitch. Like, all that stuff is awesome. You know, you go and you break down his underlying stats. All his movement on all his pitches are fantastic. XERA is a 360. X batting average is a 203. Fastball velocity is sitting at 96.8 miles an hour. You know, he is giving up a little bit of the hard contact, but not still under under 89 miles an hour, but by 0.1. So it's 88.9. You know. At 89, it's the the beginning of elite hitting exit velocity. So, like, he's got to be careful, especially with the fact that he pitches in in uh, Yankee Stadium half his games. I would like them to see him get a little bit more chase, but he's creating the whiffs and Ks, so you can't really get mad. Wish he would stop walking guys as much. He's allowing guys to barrel up a little bit. Is is diluting the hard hits, but not producing enough grounds, especially for a guy that you know pitches in Yankee Stadium. So hopefully he can improve on those things, you know, talk to Cole, talk to, you know, uh, Rodon, talk to Nestor and see what kind of advice he can get. You know, he's a still a rookie. So, you know, you got to be on point and just, you know, soak that all up. He only has three pitches, a four seams uh, fastball, a change up, a slider. 
And he really relies on that four seam fastball thrown at 49.9% of the time. But at least he splits up the difference with the other two. The changeup throws about 26% of the time and the slider 23% of the time. So at least he leans on other pitches and he's not just like a two, a two pitch kind of guy. You usually see that, right? Like Jack Flaherty in his early career, probably even now, you know, four seam fastball change up and then had a slider that he barely even threw. So he pretty much just leaned on those full tilt. At least, you know, heel is kind of, you know, distributing the wealth and kind of keeping people on their toes at least a little bit, keeping them honest. So I like heel for next year. I think he's going to be a great pitcher. Um, probably another guy that's going to be a top 30, top 40 pitcher. I'm excited to see where he lands. But guys, coming up next, I finally got some hitters for you. Hopefully we can get them all. Stay tuned for that right after this. All right. It's summertime, which means it's barbecue season. Stock up on all your favorite grill items, grilling favorites, and earn cash back every time you purchase when you use Ibotta. So you won't have to choose between burgers or hot dogs. You can get both Ibotta's free app that lets you earn cash back on every shot every time you shop. Earn hundreds of earn on hundreds of items from groceries, beauty supplies, even toys, so you can make sure that you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. The average Ibotta user earns $256 per year. That could cover a cost of an entire shopping trip, a flight that you've been eyeing, or a fancy dinner you've been craving. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much. With Ibotta, you can earn cash back that you can withdraw from your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. Simply add the offer in the app and upload your receipt to Viola the Money money is yours a uh, wall of your money's yours wow uh way to just ron burgundy that you can save on over 2400 brands and shop over a thousand retailers including your favorite grocery stores lowe's macy sephora best buy and more it's time for you to join the o- over 50 million users that use ibotta to earn cash back on every time they shop right now new ibotta offer up uh, right now ibotta is offering offering our listeners five dollars for just trying the ibotta app Use the code locked on MLB when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download a free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use the code locked on MLB. At, and that is I B O T T A in the Google Play or Apple App Apple App Store and use the code locked on MLB. All right. Sorry, stumbling stumbles, but it is what it is. Let's get into this. Let's talk a little Brent Rooker. Rooker's a little bit one that, like, okay, I'm going to take it like this. He is an outfielder that, with the landscape of outfield this year, if it's like next year, if it's the same as next year, as this year for next year, sorry, then he's going to be relevant. You know, even though he's an A, he's going to be relevant. Yeah, he's going to be a lower end, probably top 30, top 40, um, because, you know, the runs and ribbies aren't going to be there. I mean, well, the ribbies are there this year, 93, just really the runs. Nobody's really driving them in. You know, with 452 at bats, he had 70 runs, 24 doubles, two triples, 33 bombs, 93 ribs, eight stolen bases, 52 walks, 148 strikeouts, batted 294, 370 OBP, a slug of 576, and an OPS of 945. All great stat lines, honestly. He's doing all the right things in those regards. If the A's can just put a couple people around him, if Geloff can get going, things would be great. You look at his baseball savant page, and, you know, X-12 is a 399, mixed batting average is 280, slug is 598. Average exit velocity at 92.2 miles an hour, barreling about 17.3% of the time. Hard hit percentage of 51.1% of the time. Launch angle sweet spot of 40.1% of the time. Even bat speed is pretty elite. This dude is just doing good things. I just, again, he's on a team where it's just not going to produce for fantasy, not the talent. Talent, he's a good baseball player. But for fantasy, unless they unless the A's decide to you know bring in a big name or a couple names or call up some guys, they're going to be able to help Rooker get home. Then he's always going to be lower in the tiers because of it. So just keep an eye out. Don't forget about him because he will be someone that we're talking about that's relevant. And you just say, oh, it's an A's player, but no, dude had a pretty nice stat line with the with the home runs and ribs. Let's move on. Jackson Merrill, the San Diego Padres. You know, he came out and was a nice little waiver wire pickup in the in the uh, beginning of the year. He's a really good player, honestly. You know, 481 at bat, 68 runs, 22 doubles, 6 triples, 21 bombs, 79 ribs, 16 stolen bases. Struck out a boatload, but still was able to get the job done at a 291 batting average, an OBP of 321, a slug of 493, an OPS of 816. So Merrill is interesting. He had a career high of 
of home runs, obviously, and had a better pace than he did in the minors last year because through 466 at bats, he had 15 home runs. I, I'm sorry, yeah, 15 home runs, and this year he had 21. So that's an improvement. I like it. You know, stolen bases have pretty much been the same uh, and and whatnot. Batting average is a little bit better than last year, but the walk and strikeout numbers I wish were a little bit better. In his minor league career, he did a lot better at that, nearly 50, well, right over 50%. So the batting average, I think, is sustainable. So we'll see. Hold on, I'm going to take a sip. Next year, he's going to be an interesting play. Obviously, he plays a position um, uh, that – Again, might make him relevant with the outfield eligibility if it if it retains on on Yahoo. Let's see real quick. So if it retains is going to make him relevant for that, but at the same time for shortstop, he's going to fall a little bit because there's a lot of bigger names in that those regards. But for outfield, he should be pretty relevant. You know, top forty. You know, hinge the. You know, we'll see. Um, you know. It's going to be interesting. I can't wait to rank him, but he's a name I don't want to forget and kind of like, oh, it was kind of ugly, whatnot. Not really. He was pretty good all year. So just don't sleep on Jackson Merrill. Let's move on. Um, we're going to talk about Colton Kowser of the uh, Baltimore Baltimore Orioles. So this was a Dom pick. Okay. He put this in here for me. Couldn't be here today. Um, but, you know, I, I didn't realize he was having as good of a season as he was, right? 425 at bat, 68 runs. 21 doubles, two triples, 20 home runs, 62 ribs, eight stolen bases, you know, struck out a boatload of times, batted, batting about 245, 247 on the season with an OP, OPS of 774. You know, you look at his minor league stats, he, the power is true and it exists. And the batting average, I think, will get better. You know, you looked at his plate discipline in the minors, you know, last year he had 64 walks to 107 strikeouts and batted 300. I think that. You know, if the plate discipline is there, you can see definitely an improvement in batting average and whatnot. So I want to see where, where that takes us. Also, too, the season total numbers aren't indicative of the player he's been. You know, second half, he batted 290. You know, so it's not really that 247. That's really true. He had a fantastic July batting 329 with four home runs over that time. You know, August was kind of ugly at 234, but still managed to put up four home runs. But then this month right now, on the, so far, he's batting about 375 and is doing his thing. So we'll see. You know, how he finishes out this year is going to be indicative of where I get him ranked, essentially, right? So, like, you know, the reason why I was so high on, like, a Carter and whatnot was, you know, you, you look at him, you go, okay, he performed not only through through the um, through the regular season when he got the call, but then was really able to come up, able to come up during big moments in the playoffs. So I want to see what Colton Kowser does this year in those regards. And if we see anything like it looks like the second half continue – does in the playoffs, it's going to be really interesting and hard for me not to fall in love with him for next year. Next year, So Colton Kowser is somebody you don't want to forget about, honestly. So this next guy here is Kerry Carpenter, somebody that I, I ranked pretty high, obviously dealt with a lot of injury, and I feel like, you know, you look at his stat line and it doesn't really tell the whole story. You know, still 26 years old. Next year is a make it or break it year because he needs to stay healthy next year. 203 at bats, 31 runs, 11 doubles, four triples, 14 bombs, you know, 45 ribs, you know, batting about 286, an OBP of 352, a slug of 586, an OPS of 939. So, like, since coming off the IL, he has been a force once he got the groove going. And I'm really excited to own him. I have him almost everywhere. I had him ranked in my top 36. In, at the position in outfield. So I'm excited to see that he is actually getting going. I think Kerry Carpenter is going to be a fantastic player in the bigs. He's going to add and make Detroit pretty dangerous. So, you know, you look at it like, a, you know, small sample size, obviously, but you look at his underlying stats. X Wobe is a 375, um, 379. X batting average is 263. Slug is about 564. Average X velocity is 89.9. Barrel at 17.2. Hard hit percentage at 46.9. Launch angle, sweet spot of 40. All great stuff. I just want to see him walk a little bit more. I want to see him stop chasing. I want him to, you know, do a little bit more in those regards. And we're going to see him be really take over here. I think that he is going to be somebody we're going to be talking about for a long time. I am super excited for Kerry Carpenter. So I've got this last guy and let's sneak him in. Zach Neto of the Angels. And I like him a lot. I called him to start the season. I said, hey, watch out for this kid. I liked what he did last year. I like the, the pro, uh, you call it the, um, I want to say a prototype, but prospect uh, pedigree that he had coming in. And 
what he did in little bursts last year. And this year, you know, obviously started off slow, but then really has picked it up over the last couple uh, months. And I'm really excited to see it. He's been really good. I want to pull that up real quick. Um, you know, I, I'm a Zach Neto guy, straight up through and through. I've I've liked him, you know, since since he was a youngin in the in the minors, and you know, he started the show out right after the All Star break. You know, May was hot too, but he's been really good. So July, you know, he batted two seventy nine, about two home runs, nine ribs, eight stolen bases in that time. You know, walked seven times to thirteen strikeouts, all positive in both point and and um, categories leagues, and then. You know, last month was a little bit of a slump, but it's not the whole story either. The first two weeks were pretty good. It's what most of his stat line was from, seven home runs over that time, about a 235. But, you know, the counting stats were fantastic over that time, so I'm overlooking it because, you know, you still look at his OPS was at 832. His slug was a 510. Even his OVP was a 322. All not atrocious numbers. But then this month right now, he's batting 333. You know, doesn't have a home run yet, but he's there's still, still time. I think that this kid is going to be special next year. You know, probably be like a top 15 shortstop at the position. But still, Zach Neto is going to be fantastic. I think somebody that is going to be a league winner next year because if he does fall in value-wise because the position is so deep. So keep an eye out for him. I think Zach Neto is going to be fantastic. But, guys, you know, I want to thank you guys for being with me. Dom will be here tomorrow. I will not, unfortunately, get hit in a, hit in a work trip. So I got to go to Maryland. Um, That'll be fun. But, uh, yeah. So, guys, you know, I know you like us so much. I want you to check out my boy Solia Locked on MLB. Puts on a great show, covers the whole league. Get some real inside baseball with him. So, check him out. And, guys, please like, subscribe, comment, rate, review. Do everything you can. Share with your friends, everybody. You know, screaming from the rooftops if you can. And, you know, I know everybody likes to keep all their, you know, secrets to themselves. And that's how they have a leg up. But you're not a real player. You're not really a true, true, true dog that wins unless you share your wealth with everybody. So share us and see if you really can hack it against guys once they all have the same information. So please do that again. Please like subscribe, comment, rate, review, have a great rest of your day. Peace.